dependency properties are one of the most important concepts of WPF. So what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be going over some additional features of dependency properties. We've already gone over how to register dependency properties, but now we're going to take a look at property metadata, which is the fourth argument of this register method for dependency properties. And as you can see, we've already done a little bit with property metadata. So if we look at this constructor, we have given our time property a default value of the current time. But if we look at the overloads for this constructor, you can also pass in a property changed callback, which is a delegate that you can pass in, and a coerce value callback. And another thing you can do, this register method actually has another argument. So if we look at that, a validate value callback. So that's outside of the property metadata. It comes afterwards. And that's a callback we're going to be taking a look at as well. So before we get into those, I should probably give a quick rundown of what a delegate is. So this property changed callback, that is a delegate. And a delegate basically just describes the method signature that the method that you pass in needs to have. So if we look at property change callback, can I actually bring that up? So the method that we pass in as the argument to the property change callback, it needs to have the signature that returns a void and takes in a dependency object and a dependency property changed event args. So we'll define a method that has those, has that signature and we will pass it in to this constructor for property metadata. So let's go ahead and create our property changed callback. And what we're going to do is name this time property changed. And then we can do a control dot. And there we go. It'll generate the method for us. And as we see, we remember our delegate returned void and took in a dependency object and a dependency property changed event args. So when it generated the method, it took the delegate into account and generated the correct method for us. Now one thing to note is that the method is also static, which is because our dependency property is static. All dependency properties are static. So this needs to be static in order to be referenced by the dependency property. So this function is going to get called every single time that our time dependency property changes. So what are we going to do inside of this function? Well, one common thing to do is to raise an event that the dependency property has a new value. So we can do that with our time changed event. And it just makes sense because the time property has changed. Now we can let everyone know that the dependency property has a new value. So let's go ahead and raise that event. But we have a little bit of an issue here. So we're in a static method, so we can't just say this dot raise event. And if we look at our arguments for this function, we don't have a reference to our clock. So how are we going to raise this event? Well, it turns out our dependency object is the clock, but we're going to have to cast it to a clock. So let's go ahead and this is just for safety. We can check if the dependency object is a clock, and then we can do the cast. Let's go ahead and cast it. So now we can say clock dot raise event and right now we're raising it down here. So let's just copy that. Get it out of here. And we'll move it up here. Raise the event. But these event args take the old value and the new value. Where are we going to get those from? Well this dependency property changed event args gives it to us. So we can say e dot old value and e dot new value. But the old value is just the object. We need a date time, so we're going to have to cast this as well. And that's one of the funky things with all these callbacks is they take these low-level objects like dependency object, literally just object. You're never going to really get the correct object that you want. You're going to have to do some kind of casting. Now let's go ahead and drop a breakpoint right here and test this out. So there we go, we hit the breakpoint, our time property changed, we went through this function, this callback, and we raised the event. Our time keeps on changing, we keep on going. 
going through the callback, so all is good. Now you might be wondering, what is what is even the point of this callback function? Why don't we just raise the event in the actual setter for the time property? And the reason we're not going to do this is because WPF suggests that you do not put anything else in these setters for your dependency property actual properties. And the reason for that is because if you set the time dependency property through XAML or through a binding, the XAML is not actually going to call or go through this setter. It's just going to call set value directly. So it's not going to end up raising this event because it's not going to go through this setter. What it's going to do is it's going to call set value on this property and it's going to look at the callback and call this instead. So it's good to just have all of your stuff through here because you know this is going to get called every time the dependency property changes, no matter what. So let's go ahead and undo all this because it's just wrong. Don't do that. Use your callbacks instead. So the next callback we're going to take a look at is actually outside of property metadata, but it's still kind of like metadata for your dependency property. So this last argument of this register method is a validate value callback. So this is another delegate, and let's go ahead and just generate it. So we're going to name this delegate, we'll call it time validate value. So let's generate that method, and there we go. So when does this get called? This is actually going to get called before the property changed callback. So what you do with this method is you take a look at the value. If it's something that is valid, you return true and you continue. It'll, it'll call your time property changed. If you take a look at your value and it's invalid, then you return false and that'll actually raise an argument exception. So what are we going to do with this callback for our time property? Now I actually had trouble coming up with a good example. So what I decided was that if the seconds of the current time is odd, then the current time is invalid. And that's just going to be for an example. I don't think that's a very practical example, but it will display how these callbacks are used. So let's go ahead and do this validation, but right off the bat again, we don't have a reference to the date time that we're trying to validate. Because we're in a static method, we can't just say this.time, and then if we look at the parameters of this function, all we get is this plain old object of value. Now that value is actually our date time that we want to validate, but we're going to have to cast it to a date time. So first off, let's check to make sure it is a date time just to be safe. And then if it is, then we'll do the cast. And then we have our time, we can do our validation. So what are we going to do? We're going to check if the time seconds is odd. Get some brackets in here. We'll just return false. And then otherwise, if we get through the function, we'll return true. So now, if we run this, we should get that argument exception raised. And there we go. So we have an odd seconds and our validation failed. So we raised an argument exception. Now this is actually going to be hard to test with, or I can just comment this out just to show you guys that if we return true, then everything is okay. And there we go. Now, actually another thing I want to show you guys is the ordering that these get called in. So if we put some breakpoints here, and here we hit this breakpoint, we continue, then we hit the time property changed breakpoint. So your validation comes before your property changed. So let's bring back our validation and get rid of these breakpoints as well. And now we're going to take a look at the last callback. So this is, let's go ahead and move this to a new line as well so we can see everything. So the last one goes on property metadata, and this is the coerce value callback. So let's go ahead, this is another delegate, so let's generate this method as well. And we're going to call this time coerce value. 
and generate that method and there we go so the delegate for this returns an object we receive a dependency object and we get the value that we need to coerce so the coerce value callback is actually very similar to the validate value callback and the difference between these callbacks is that in the validate when our value didn't pass the validation we returned false which threw an exception however in the coerce value callback what you can do is if your value doesn't pass validation you can modify hence the name coerce you can modify the value so that it does pass validation and then you just return that coerced value from this function and everything is smooth you're not going to throw an exception like in the validate value callback so really these two callbacks are kind of mutually exclusive and you'd want to use the coerced value callback when you can modify your base value to pass validation and then you'd want to use your validate value callback instead if you can't modify your value and you just need to throw an exception so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna get rid of this callback and we're just gonna implement the coerce value callback because we can modify our value so that it is not an odd number of seconds so that's exactly what we're gonna do so let's take a look at this function same thing static and all we receive is our base value as an object so we got to do our casting again so if base value is date time then let's do the cast and then we can work with this base value so if the time that seconds are odd then what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the base value to be time dot add seconds one and then if we're adding one second to an odd number of seconds then we get even seconds and our validation is happy and at the very end we can return the base value so let's go ahead and test this out and our clock should look kind of funky because it's just gonna skip in twos which we can't really see because we should show seconds on here so we can get a better look at what's going on so let's make show seconds true for our digital clock and let's run that again and there we go so whenever the time is odd we're setting the seconds to or we're adding one to the second so basically we're just seeing this time move in twos and let's put a breakpoint right there so we hit this breakpoint because our seconds were odd and we did the coercion by adding one second and then our validation is all good now another thing I should show is that coercion actually gets called before the property change callback so if we put a breakpoint on both of these we hit the coercion and then we can continue and we hit the property changed and then we hit coercion again and end. as you can see right here we have an odd value so we're gonna do the validation okay and then we step over so the base value gets set to an even and then if we come down here and we jump over here and we look at our clock or actually we can just look at the new value we can see the new value is the even coerced value so the coercion does actually play effect in your property change as well so that odd value is never going to get through your system at all another thing to note is that the full ordering for all these callbacks is first validate gets called then coerce gets called and then property change gets called and that was a little bit disappointing for me because I thought that coerce would get called before validation so I was hoping what you could do is coerce the value or try and coerce the value and then if the coercion failed then it would run through validation and then return false and throw the exception but that's not how it works validate gets called then coerce gets called so that's a little bit unfortunate but that's one thing to note if you guys are trying to think in the same thing anyways that's going to wrap it up for going over property metadata for dependency properties so 
we went over the property changed callback, the validate value callback, and the coerce value callback. We did a pretty simple example for these validation type of callbacks. Not the most practical, but hopefully you guys learned about how all of these callbacks work and can implement them in your own applications. Other than that, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, criticisms, or general comments, be sure to leave them below in the comments section. But other than that, thank you for watching. Be sure to leave a like or subscribe for more.